Okay, so uh, hi everyone. My name is Yichi, and uh, we're from Amazon SageMeet Neo team. So today I'm going to present a comprehensive approach of uh, CMA model inference on CPUs. So this uh, presentation consists of uh, three parts. Uh, first, I'll describe the motivation of our work, and then the approach we used to tackle the problem, including tensor level optimization and uh, tensor graph joint tuning. Uh, finally, I will show our evalu evaluation results and uh, conclusions. So first, the uh, motivation. So uh, nowadays, uh, convolution uh, neural network has become the state of art for many texts, including image classification, detection, uh, tracking, etc. So as Amazonia, we work backwards from our customers. So we got feedback that uh, many customers are using CM model inference in their applications. So similarly, the widespread deployment of CPUs uh, in servers, clients, and uh, edge devices makes this platform attractive. So in general, roughly 90% of deep learning use cases are doing inference. So uh, performing CM model inference efficiently on CPUs uh, is critical to many users. So there are mainly two approaches uh, to optimize CM model inference on CPUs. The first one is taken by the deep learning frameworks. So they use external math libraries such as MKL, OpenBlus, etc., to uh, to accelerate the individual kernels, or, or they uh, extract a, a subgraph from the network, pass it, through, pass it to external uh, acceleration libraries such as TensorRT, and uh, leave the remainders to themselves. So in both scenarios, uh, since the framework it treats the acceleration library as a black box, uh, it misses the opportunity to join to the performance of the model as a whole so moreover, uh, external libraries only supports a subset of the used, uh, used uh, operators, so the performance could be poor uh, for uncommon models. Another approach of doing CM model inference optimization is to use the deep learning compiler. Um, deep learning compilers convert models from different frameworks to a unified IR. Uh, such IR is, uh, has two, two levels. The high level describes a computation graph of a deep learning model. The low level, on the other hand, it de describes the computation logic of each operator. So um, by unifying the representation, the compiler is able to perform both tensor and the graph level optimization, such as fusion, pre-computing, <coughs> pre et cetera. Um, by coordinating between the lower level and the high level IRs, uh, deep learning compiler is able to do joint optimization instead of doing each separately. However, this kind of joint opt optimization is still limited in the modern deep learning compilers. Our work is built on top of TVM, which is one of the most popular deep learning compilers. Um, Intel OpenVINO is another deep learning compiler that uh, focuses mostly on Intel's devices. So we use it as one of our performance baselines. So we have introduced the motivation and uh, how other works are uh, doing. Uh, now let's see how we tackle the problems. Since uh, more than 90% of computation is, uh, is spent on uh, convolution, so I would like to first describe the uh, optimization idea behind it and how we build a tunable template. The computation uh, fashion of uh, convolution is similar to matrix multiplication, both consisting of a number of multiplications and uh, aggregations in nested loops. For convolution, for convolution, it consists of six loops of computation in which the kernel width, kernel height, uh, and the input channel are the reduction axes. The 
the optimization of convolutions and networks to matrix multiplication. So, for, so first, to utilize the data locality, we tile the channel size and uh, put it to the innermost axis. We also leverage FMA instruction to vectorize the computation and uh, enroll a specific size of loops to fully utilize the registers. Finally, we implemented a high performance thread pool to take advantage of parallelism. Uh, conceptually, uh, this is a well taken optimization problem. Uh, however, in practice, for different uh, input workloads, the optimization configuration could be very different. For example, if the channel size equals uh, to 8, then it does not make sense to tile it by 16, right? So using TVM's high-level DSL, we create templates where some of the parameters are tunable so that the system can find the best configuration for the specific convolution workload. Uh, here we choose the block size of input and uh, output channels and the number of used CPU registers and whether to enroll loops to be tunable parameters. So as, tuned, uh, uh, as tuning happens within a single convolution operation, can, we call it local search. During the automatic performance tuning, the local tuner exhaustively uh, tries different uh, combination of parameters and uh, runs on, de on real device. So we record the performance of each con configuration for graph tuner, which I will be uh, elaborating later. Uh, we do not only keep the best performance configuration for each convolution because the local optimum uh, doesn't necessarily to, uh, lead to global optimum. Now let's move forward to tensor and graph level joint tuning. So let's first take a look at um, an example uh, so normally the default uh, input data layout is NCHW, where N represents the batch size, uh, and uh, C represents the input channel, H and W represent uh, feature maps height and width, respectively. Uh, the order is the same as that in memory, which means uh, N is the outermost axis and uh, W is the innermost. So different data layouts will lead to vastly different uh, performance. Our previous local search shows that uh, tiling the input channel by 16 uh, could uh, generally get uh, good performance. If we were to do that, we can apply a layout transform um, uh, operation on the input data. Uh, produces the new data layout, NCHW16C. So where the 16 here is the size of the tile, the input channel, and we put the 16 size, the axis to the innermost. Now we can change each of the convolution compute to working on the new data layout. So note that uh, ReLU is an element-wise operation that uh, can take any data layout and produce correct results. So the new data layout can now flow through the network until it uh, reaches a uh, flatten operation. Flatten can only take her original data layout, so we have to insert an extra data uh, layout transform uh, be before uh, flatten. Also note that the uh, kernel also needs to be transformed according to the new data layout, while for uh, inference, kernel transform can be pre-calculated uh, during compile time. In our solution, we implemented a systematic approach to modify the layout between the layers and uh, have the optimized layer pass through the network as far as possible. But if, what if CS, these two convolutions have different layouts? What layout should we choose to achieve the best end-to-end -end performance? That's a question. So here's an example of two back-to-back -back convolution. As we've just mentioned, we tile the channel to be the innermost axis here for 
uh, first conversion, we can choose tiling size 16, 8, and 4. And for the second, there are four choices, uh, 16, 8, 4, and uh, 32. If we want to decide the best end-to-end -end running time of each of these two layers, uh, for example, uh, we need to check every uh, combination between the two layers. So for example, NCHW16C to NCHW16C does not require any layout transform, while we need to insert layout transform for the other two. So to achieve the best running time for NCHW16C, we need to choose NCHWAC for the first convolution. Here we can see that uh, avoiding, so the, the key uh, here is, uh, the point here is that uh, avoiding layout transform is not necessary to be the best strategy. On the other hand, uh, NCHW4C and NCHW32C are the best optimal, uh, local optimal in both layers. While uh, now the inefficient layout transform makes the overall running time uh, less attractive. So thus, um, the running time of layout transform can largely affect the end-to-end -end performance. It is also the major reason that the local optimal does not necessarily to be the global optimal. So if we write down the equation, uh, this is the equation of dynam dynamic programming. We implemented an approach to automatically tune the local op options uh, operation and uh, choose the interlayout da data layout using algorithm we described. For network as simple as the previous one, we can directly uh, apply dynamic, dynamic programming, while for more complex net, uh, network structures, uh, we need to modify the algorithm slightly to record the uh, ex extra states. And for detection models like uh, SSD, so well, the SSD here is a short for a uh, single shot uh, multi-box detector. It is not the drives. So we so for detection so for detection model like SSD, we use a heuristic uh, algorithm to search up, up approximately. Here the uh, evaluation. Uh, I picked some of the results presented in the paper to show. Uh, while the speed up ratio is uh, normalized, the, the higher the better. We tested on um, Intel ARM uh, and uh, AMD CPUs. Our solution can consistently achieve the best performance uh, for various of CM models. Our baseline includes MXNet and uh, TensorFlow. For Intel and, uh, and the AMD CPUs, we also compare our solution with Intel OpenVINO. We notice that uh, uh, although Intel OpenVINO performs fairly good for most of the networks, it fails to achieve decent performance sometimes. For example, DanceNet on uh, AMD CPUs. So for more results, please refer to our paper. Also note that uh, our solution on ARM CPUs achieves Best, uh, um, achieve better speed up because existing accelerate leverages that don't op optimize seriously for ARM CPUs. While by applying auto tuning, our solution is uh, genera generalizable to more models and uh, platforms. Here's the scalability of our customized uh, thread pool. Uh, most deepening frameworks in the compilers use OpenMP for parallelism on CPUs. Since OpenMP is designed to be general, it might not provide the best performance for our cases. Moreover, OpenMP has different implementation versions, so the performance may vary among the platforms. Thus, we implement our customized thread pool by using log free queue. Uh, thread banding and uh, cache line padding. Results show that uh, our thread pool can uh, have better scalability than our baselines, as well as our, our solution using OpenMPS the thread pool. 
So our solution has been deployed on Amazon Sage McNeil, which is uh, an inference service that helping a lot of users accelerate their, their model inference, both on the cloud and uh, at the edge. Conclusion. So in summary, uh, in summary, we apply tensor and graph level joint optimization for CNN model inference. Our solution consistently achieves the best performance for the variety of popular CNN models and the CPUs. Our optimization ideas are ap ap applicable to other hardware targets like GPUs as well. Finally, our solution has been open sourced and deployed to production in AWS. Thanks. Uh, so I'm happy to take questions. And we are hiring. Hi, Yita Chen from Arizona. So I'm wondering what kind of workload did you use to measure the speed up? Uh, you mean the uh, um, you mean the input size uh, such? Yeah, well, so are you sending each image to a model and then find out how long does it take or you have something else? So, so uh, we are basically, um, so I mean the image classification, uh, these kind of deep learning models, they have a common uh, input size like the two, uh, 224 by 224 uh, and the input channel is uh, usually three. Uh, and uh, so we are uh, mostly working on the one batch size the input because for inference it is the common use cases. Okay, so is it possible to make a larger batch to further increase the speed for inference? Uh, yes, it is possible because uh, um, so so here, uh, here's the thing that uh, for CPUs, if we have already uh, utilized the uh, uh, parallelism, then uh, increase the batch size does not make any uh, mm -hmm. speed up. Um, so we are we have some experiment that uh, uh, to uh, to say uh, increase the batch size and uh, uh, but uh, I mean for modern CPUs, uh, we do not see much speed up. Okay, um, so also regarding the speed up, mm -hmm. um, for the 16 core results, mm -hmm. did you monitor the utilization of the CPU and the memory? Uh, yes, yes we did. So the utilize, uh, utilization usually is um, uh, around 90%. 90% uh, of yeah. both CPU and memory or just the CPU? Uh, just the CPU. So memory is not that high? Memory is not that high because the it is related to the model itself. So All right. Yeah. Um, last question. So how does this compare to the uh, TensorFlow XLA, which also use the Intel instructions to optimize the work? Uh, for the performance uh, illustrated in the paper, we didn't use uh, XLA, uh, but uh, we uh, did do some benchmark uh, using XLA. Because uh, TensorFlow X XLA, it does not uh, uh, seriously optimized for CPUs, I guess. So um, we don't see much speed up with XLA uh, enabled. Okay, thank you. All right, let's thank the speaker one more time. Okay. <clears throat>